Report surfacing that former FBI Director James Comey will testify before the Senate Intel Committee as early as next, next week, and that he plans to say that President Trump asked him to back off of his investigation into National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. But this seems to contradict testimony that Comey gave back on May 3rd. Take a listen. Attorney General or senior officials at the Department of Justice opposes a specific investigation. Can they halt that FBI investigation? In theory, yes. Has it happened? Not in my experience, because it would be a big deal to tell the FBI to stop doing something that, without an appropriate purpose. I mean, we're oftentimes, they give us opinions that we don't see a case there, and so you ought to stop investing resources in it. But I'm talking about a situation where we were told to stop something for a political reason. That would be a very big deal. It's not happened in my experience. Joining us now to weigh in on those comments is National Review contributing editor Andy McCarthy. So what he said on May 3rd, Andy, seems to directly contradict any notion. And again, we don't know if this is what he's going to say uh, next week when he gives testimony. But that May 3rd testimony contradicts him saying that uh, the president tried to stop him from investigating uh, one of these one of these things on Russia, right? Well, Dave, if, if that's what he was going to say, I would agree with you, but I don't think he's going to say that. I think what he said in the prior testimony is that he had never been obstructed. What I think he's going to say in his testimony is that he's been pressured. And there's going to be a lot of stuff that comes out, I'm sure, from the Democrat media complex over the next week to try to make people think those two words are synonyms, they're not. Um, being pressured is not the same thing as being obstructed. It's a big difference. Well, but was he, if he was pressured, many people say that he would be obliged then to mention that to somebody, either an inspector general or somebody outside of his confines. Instead, he kept that, if it happened, he kept that information to himself. No, well, if he were obstructed, if he, was, if he had witnessed a crime get committed, he absolutely would have been obliged to report that to the Justice Department, probably to Congress, but certainly up and down his chain of command. I think the fiddle that is going on here is kind of like, you know, collusion and crime, where we hear collusion, collusion, collusion. You're supposed to believe that that's the same thing as crime. Pressure is not the same thing as obstruction okay. of justice. And in fact, if the president had ordered him to shut down the investigation, that's something the president's permitted to do, and that wouldn't be obstruction. Okay, so, so if there was pressure, and even if it was strong pressure, but fell short of obstruction, that would not be an impeachable offense, correct? What's an impeachable offense is really up to Congress. I think if you had a pattern of corrupt behavior where the White House meddled in law enforcement for improper reasons, right. then you might get uh, a obstruction case. But obstruction's a political remedy. It's not a legal one. Okay. Here's something that is illegal, Andy, is, is, is leaking information that is classified. And there has been a lot of leaking going on. Uh, and Congress is trying to get to the bottom of that as well. And now we just got breaking news that the House Intel Committee is going to subpoena individuals and information relating to the unmasking of some of these uh, FISA conversations that, that, that our intel forces have been monitoring that mentioned uh, U.S. people. Those people were then unmasked and somebody leaked that information to the press. What are your thoughts on this? Well, you just asked me about impeachable offenses. I can't think of a more classic impeachable offense in terms of obstruction of, uh, of abuse of power which is really what a impeachment goes to, then the government's use of its national security foreign intelligence collection authority in order to do domestic monitoring on Americans. And if that happened in a systematic way, that's a very, very serious offense. Wholly apart from the fact that you're quite right, the actual leaking of classified information is also a crime, and it's really the only crime we've heard of in you know six months of coverage of this uh, quote unquote controversy. Yeah. Now, quick last question, Andy. If if it was just unmasking by itself, and of course there have been some indications that Susan Rice or other people in the Obama administration were doing the unmasking, how do you connect the dots to the unmasking and to actual using intel for political purpose? Well, it, it really is going to depend on the circumstances. If there's, if there's an unmasking that's done once or twice, and there's an articulable intelligence purpose behind it, namely that you need to know the identification of the American in order to understand and exploit the intelligence value of, of whatever it is you're looking at, 
that's not a that's far from a crime. That's what they're supposed to be doing. If, on the other hand, they use their unmasking authority systematically again and again on, say, the same group of targets, yeah. that looks a lot more like domestic spying. Andrew McCarthy, great to have you on as always, Andy. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate Thank you. it.